I was saying, it's just an honor, an honor to, to be here um, with such a, a great moment in uh, uh, magic history. Um, it took a little time, but I'm here. I'm so humbly grateful to be a part of uh, um, something special. Um, you know, some great years here. Um, you know, I can't wait to, to see I think, last, I, think, uh, I think next month marks 10 years since uh, your last, uh, the Lakers played here in February of 04. Now, you said that was the last time you'd ever been in the city of Orlando? Wow. You might be right. <laughs> I think it was the last time I was, uh, I was here. Um, you know, that's, that's too long um, to be away from such a great city. Great fans, uh, great people, and just driving from uh, uh, the hotel and downtown has changed. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, you can walk downtown and and not worry about getting mugged. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I'm here now, and believe me, I'm mean, enjoy this moment. Horace, give us a little idea what you've been doing since you since you retired. Wow. Retired in 04 um, on the central coast of California, about an hour north of uh, Santa Barbara, a little place called Aurora Grande, California, uh, San Luis Obispo County. Um, what I've been doing, well, I work part time for the NBA. I uh, work as a, a goodwill ambassador. <coughs> they send me all over the world in terms of doing clinics and camps for kids. Um, um, speaking with their sponsors, their potential sponsors, and just enjoying uh, things like that. Um, <clears throat> um, you know, have a great family at home. Uh, my wife uh, has three beautiful daughters, and we just uh, have a son, um, nine months old, and been a father and husband. If you have kids out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, just enjoying life. And just recently, um, uh, myself and two other partners um, uh, were uh, developing, um, uh, it's called the Area 54 Academy for Kids. And where, where I live, they just didn't have the funding for Boys and Girls Club, and they, they had to close it. So it gave us an opportunity to uh, uh, to start something like this. And guys, I'm telling you, this is going to be one of the state-of-the-art facilities um, in this country. Uh, I can't go into details of who who is backing us, but it's two of the largest companies um, that's going to participate, and it's going to bring those kids off the streets who don't have anything to do um, in the, you know, after school, you know, we're going to have computers there, we're going to have uh, teachers there getting these kids, and of course we're uh, we going to have sports there, all kinds of sports from basketball, soccer, volleyball, mm -hmm. things like that. That's going to be, not, that's my next project. Is that going to be in Arroyo Grande? In San Luis Obispo. It's going to be, you know, five, ten minutes away. Do you, do you watch games at all? Guys, <coughs> that's my daughter back there. You can ask her. I'm, I go crazy. <laughs> I am, I'm sitting there, and I watch all the games. I mean, from Magic, Bulls, uh, Lakers, Heat. Um, there's a couple of teams that mm -hmm. I can't watch just because there's no fundamentals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. But um, I'm an avid NBA uh, fan. How would you? Well, looking back from the years that you played to the brand of basketball that's played now, what differences do you see? Well, you know, you look at all the changes that the NBA made, the rules changing. You know, you can't put your hands on people. and uh, You know, if you uh, touch somebody, it's a, it's a foul. And, you know, back in my day, you know, you, you can fist fight and you maybe get suspended for one. 
one game. So the game has gotten a, a lot cleaner from that standpoint. Um, fundamentals, you got to get back to the basics. I mean, you know, I know the fans want to see uh, up and down, but uh, fundamentals, it's, it's tough to watch. We uh, talked to uh, some other guys who had been on that 95 team. Um, is that, you won three championships with the Bulls, but coming here you were kind of the linchpin, the last piece to that puzzle. Does, does not winning that Houston series, does that still bother you? Because you talk to Penny and Shaq and it still gnaws at them. That's one of the most gut-wrenching <laughs> things um, I've ever gone through professionally. To have such a talented team like we had then, and to lose in the manner that we did, um, that's something I would never forget, and I'm pretty sure who who's on that team, um, players and coaches, uh, won't ever forget. And that's why I say to anyone <clears throat> who plays professional basketball, seize that moment, seize it. Because you don't know if you ever, ever get back to that uh, that place. Did you pretty much knew after Shaq left that? I mean, obviously, no one knew Shaq was going to go until. But that was it's like Nick said; he saw his championship go out the window. Well, you know, I honestly, I still had confidence uh, in, this, in in that particular team. We had a healthy Penny Hardaway, and you know, myself, Nick, and Dennis. I mean, we still had some some good pieces. Um, losing Shaq, man, yeah, it, just, it was mind blowing. But I had confidence, and I'm pretty sure if you ask anybody else, they on that team, they had confidence also. I mean, we had, you know, in Chicago, we didn't have that dominant center, but you know, we had Michael and Scotty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you look at Penny in his prime, man. He's, you know, he's top five, top ten player. Forced to be recognized as one of the legends of a franchise, and does that let you know that you left a legacy behind? I mean, is that special to you? It's very humbling. It's so humbling um, to have been part of such a great organization, a great team, a great community here in Orlando. Um, to be honored with something like this, you, know, you really, truly, I don't know if you, if you ever felt you were appreciated in Chicago, but I, if I remember right, the first preseason game here, I think they gave you a standing ovation mm -hmm. when you were announced. Did that, you know, did you feel like you belonged here, that people appreciated what you brought? You know, I, you know, in Chicago, um, I felt, I mean, you know, you talk to Michael and Scotty, team, they appreciate what I did uh, on the floor. Um, but coming here, wow, that night when I did get the stand on base, it was like, you know, these are some special people here. Um, here in this community, these fans, um, this organization, um, like I said, you know, all of that and this is a very humble. When have you last spoken to Shaq or Penny or Dennis or Nick? I spoke to uh, Shaq um, a few months ago. And, you know, you guys know Shaq. He's still <laughs> silly. Just still silly. You know, bringing up things that I can't repeat here. Um, I, uh, I did a, a function with Penny uh, a few months uh, mm -hmm. ago. And, uh, you know, Penny's doing some great work down in Memphis with those kids. spoken to uh, 3D. You know, I see him on TV, you know, uh, doing this thing, uh, doing a great job. So I'm just looking forward to, you know, seeing some old faces, you know, no pun intended, guys. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think about how it ended here and what you could have done differently or what anybody could have done differently or is that just one of the things that happens – I mean, it happens in, in every walk of life, in every profession. Uh, and, you know, it, it could have been handled a lot differently. 
looking back on Still in that ball, Penny giving it up to me, and me dunking that thing. <laughs> Looking at Scotty's face, <laughs> Looking at Scotty Pippen's face. <laughs> it was one of the, the greatest moments of my uh, my career. You know, beating the Bulls uh, like that, and uh, and you know, and I learned <coughs> Phil Jackson said to his team, we're going to let Horace beat us. We're going to make Horace beat us. We're going to leave him open. And, and matter of fact, in, in a few weeks, I'm going to have lunch with Phil in L.A. Um, he wanted, he was like, we're going to make him beat us. And then I guess when I really saw it, you know, shooting the ball well, and, you know, Michael and Scotty went to him like, look, all right, he's open. Let's put somebody on. And if you know Phil, he's stuck. And you know he left me open, and you know as a team we you know, we beat him that year. When Are you going to remind him of that when you see him? Well, I want him to pay for the the lunch first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what about when you joined the Lakers? Did you remind him back in two thousand well, about nineteen ninety five? Well, we talked about it. We discussed it. Yeah, we discussed it, and uh, he would say something like, "Well, you know, I didn't think you could." do it, but you showed me wrong, and I don't think he played me that much that night either. <laughs> he played me about 15 minutes that night. <laughs> you remember who were the players that picked you up at the end of uh, game six in Chicago? And, <clears throat> and I've spoken to uh, the Bulls, you know, I saw them in Brazil, and they still remind me of they were still a little ticked off because they picked me up. And Shaq threatened me. Seriously. He was like, if you don't let us pick you up, I'm going to deal with you. That was the Shaq words. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, no, no, no. Come on. Get me. He literally grabbed me, and the guys put me on their shoulder. And, you know, when you get into that moment, that excitement, and, and you know, the way I left there, and Things happen, and of course I had to do the ML car <laughs> towel thing. How many pairs of goggles do you still have uh, stashed away? Well, I have about three to four, about three to four pair of goggles, and, uh, and sometimes I take them out, I look at them, and you know I got little spider webs and stuff all over them. I'm like, wow, some good years. Can you, hear, can you hear a guy like Jason Maxfield say, Horace was my hero, I wear 54 for him. Does that make you feel old? Does that make you feel honored? <laughs> honored and old. <laughs> honored and old. Um, you know, I watched Jason when he was in Detroit. Um, that kid reminds me of me a lot um, in terms of his, the work ethic, um, uh, hitting the boards, uh, blocking some shots and things of that nature. Um, you know, of course, like I said, I, Watch many games, and I wish Job Bond would give a little bit more playing time. <laughs> you know, I know Job from my playing years, so uh, uh, he's doing a great job as a coach. And uh, me personally, I'm looking for better things uh, uh, for this man. Have you gotten to meet uh, Jason yet? No, not yet. Hopefully, I can uh, give him some encouraging words out there, and uh, no pressure at all. You know, wearing 54. <laughs> Horace, there aren't many players in today's NBA who play the way you did, jump shooting power forwards that don't shoot threes. Um, how have you seen that position change in the last several years? What do you think it means for the league? Well, it means that uh, you know you have guys like uh, Rasheed Wallace when he played. Uh, you know, you have a guy like uh, uh, Cousin. And Sacramento, uh, 